Our next speaker will be uh, Major General Retired uh, Tal Russo, uh, with over 33 years of experience serving in the Israeli Defense Force, the IDF. With his uh, last job being uh, commander of the Southern Command, Russo began his service with the Israeli Air Force Special Forces Unit Sheldag. He would later command um, a squad in the first Lebanon war. Russo served as the assistant of the head of the operation directorate in the special missions during the second Lebanon war. And during his service as the commander of the Southern Command, he oversaw Operation Pillar of Defense. Before retiring in April, Russo holds an MBA from Tel Aviv University. I very much uh, identify uh, with what has been said thus far. I don't think it's our little private problem. I definitely think it is a much broader problem. Uh, it is a global problem, and I very much identify with what the Minister of Justice said earlier, and I do think it is a challenge, not only for the State of Israel. We may be here in a region, a very unique neighborhood, you may call it, However, I think overall, when I look at the development of warfare or war and the threats and the type of warfare that is conducted, you know, it's much easier for me to look through the perspective of the wars that I've been in the last 33 years. Uh, you know, uh, from uh, you know, for say in the first Lebanon war, a commander, we went in, the civilians ran out, the terrorists remained, and it was basically, you know, just a um, uh, war. Um, just a regular war, conventional war, as, as, as it is called, through a pillar of defense, uh, was also the head of a platoon. And then, as well, the, you know, the terrorists didn't quite exploit the civilian population. So it was easier to deal with those things. Later on, we started, um, you know, seeing the exploitation, the utilization of the urban space and the civil population as a very central tool when it comes to terrorism, especially during the Second Lebanon War, where we saw the Hezbollah entering the villages and they didn't let those, you know, civilians evacuate. You know, um, they, we wanted the civilians to evacuate. They didn't let them. We saw it in um, cast lead operation later on. And and then I was the head of the operations unit, and then in Pillar of Defense, where we tried to really be very precise. Um, and I'll give you a little description of what the challenge was. The minute one enters such an event like the Pillar of Defense, you know, that is a warfare, maybe the most populated and densely populated area in the world, not necessarily, um, not necessarily confronting one organization. Sometimes, you know, in like, in like Gaza, there are 10 different organizations, terror organizations that are partners to that event, each one has his own, its own ideology, and of course Hamas is, is on top of everybody. But the, again, the target was, and you know, first of all, in, in, when we were preparing, when we did the preparations, even before you know starting the war, preparations are crucial and essential. Like what? plans do you draw? How do you, you know, decide what the sensitive sites are? There are thousands of sensitive locations in Gaza. How do you convey it to everyone? There are thousands. And again, the minute you look at the map of sensitive sites, now what do I mean when I say that? I mean schools, I mean clinics, I mean kindergartens. Endless, endless. And you have to somehow, in this mosaic of little sensitive spots, you have to conduct your war there. And that is a no easy feat. And add to that a humanitarian plan. How do you, you know, at the end of the day, you do care for the civilians, don't you? You care about them even much more than the terrorist organizations care about those civilians. And you have to prepare a plan. How do you get to each and one of them? How do you evacuate? the wounded, how do you give them to eat, you know, beyond your forces, you have to prepare an identical plan for the Palestinian um, society, population. Now, add to that, 
the decision, you know, you have to improvise while being under attack. And that is not an easy decision. How to improvise while you're under attack. You know, when you're under fire, you might have some times, sometimes to, you know, to choose your target. You know, we, um, there's a group of targets. There, were like, there are actually 15 people who sit around a table. We have a certain policy. And everybody at the end, uh, there are also, by the way, legal consultants uh, that are part of this team, people from the civil administration that are familiar with all the little nuances. And then you have to see if that, you know, collateral damage, you know, um, you have to, of course, again, um, be in touch with the Air Force, does it justify the attack? And you have to understand that all those technological advantages, if we can, on the theoretical level, let's say, you know, uh, throw 10 bombs in, uh, in a thousand bombs in 10 minutes with a you know, JPS and all of that, we are unable to do so in such a situation because there are certain points that we have to, and two, two planes have to clean up the area before we drop the door bomb. Sometimes these are chances somebody comes closer, and as was said, yeah, also the pilot has, he can, can, you know, bring in his own calculation and decision into the picture, and that is a huge challenge. All of these things, the terrorist organizations understand this way. Well, and we saw that, you know, for them, 20 dead kids is a success. For us, it's a failure. And that is the huge, the huge dilemma.